Hello everybody. Welcome to Word Shard. Hello children. In the last class we had done the chapter nouns. You know that pronouns has a part of nouns. See, I have circled the nouns. We have done it clearly. We know that there are various types of nouns. For example, common noun, proper noun, collective noun, abstract noun, isn't it? So generally, if we speak about nouns, what are they? They are the names of certain things. It can be a thing. It can be a person. It can be a place. If I say Taj Mahal, it is a noun, isn't it? If I say Ravi, it is a noun because it is the name of a person. Taj Mahal is a name of a place. So now, because nouns are clear to us, we will read another part of nouns only, quite similar to nouns, okay? Which is called pronouns. See, pro and nouns. Pro is just the beginning part of the nouns. So where, what, what are pronouns? Pronouns are those words which we write instead of a noun. For example, if we are writing, let us see this picture to make it easier for you all to understand. See, in this picture, we see three things, isn't it? We see three pictures. First one is a girl and a boy. Again, the next one is a boy and a girl. And the third one is also a boy and a girl. Let us assume that these, these boys and girls are same only. For example, the girl is, girl's name is Rita and the boy's name is Ravi. So, let us frame the first sentence as Ravi and Rita were playing with balloons first sentence again in the second sentence we write Ravi and Rita were going to school next in the third sentence again we repeat Ravi and Rita listened to music in their laptops now don't you think it is it is seeming to be very monotonous okay con continuously I am telling Ravi and Rita, Ravi and Rita, Ravi and Rita. I'm repeating the same thing. Would you like if I go on repeating the same thing over and over, thrice, four times, five times? No. So, in the first line, Ravi and Rita, you are writing, okay, no problem. Ravi and Rita were playing with balloons. When we co come to the second line, okay, in the second line, when we are talking about same Ravi and Rita who are going to schools, we will not write Ravi and Rita again. We will write they were going to schools. Again in the third sentence, we see the same Ravi and Rita. Okay. So again, we will not write repeat Ravi and Rita. We will just write they were listening to music in their laptops. So what are the words used instead of the noun Ravi and Rita? Here we are using the words they because they are two in number, isn't it? If there was one, if there was just the boy, then we would have written Ravi was playing with the balloon. He was going to school and he was listening to music. So instead of Ravi, we will write he. Instead of if there was only one girl, we would write she. If there are more than one person, plural, we will write they. Okay, so the words which we write instead of a noun that becomes a pronoun okay i think this is very easy now pronouns have a number of kinds for example you know that nouns have a number of kinds like for example we have a common noun we have proper noun we have collective noun we have abstract noun similarly pronouns also have different kinds let us Take the first kind. What is the first kind? The first kind is the personal pronoun. Okay. Personal pronouns. How would you explain personal pronouns? See, this is very easy. Just what I have explained you right now. See, there are th three types, three persons. For example, I am talking to you. Okay. When I am speaking, then I becomes the first person. When I am talking to you, you becomes the second person. Okay, and if I and you are talking about another person or a dog or a cat or anybody else other than I and you, everything else is the third person. So we have three persons. The first person is I, the second person is you, third person is the rest of the world. That is a dog, it can be a cat, it can be the boys, it can be the girls, anybody 
other than I and you. So we will remember that in case of a personal pronoun, we have three persons. See the first one, first person. Here in case of personal pronoun, you will write down in your copies that I and we are only the two types which we use in case of first person. When it is singular, it is only I. When it is plural, it is only we. In case of a second person, what are the words that we can use in, a, in the case of a personal pronoun? It is only and only you. Okay, you is used in both singular as well as plural. In the class you have seen, I think, the teacher tries to call one girl in the class. How does she call? You come out of your bench. Isn't it? If the teacher comes and sees the whole class talking loudly, then what will the teacher say? You are making a lot of noise, which means when you are talking to one person, when you are talking to a number of persons, you are calling it as you. So you is both singular as well as plural. Clear? In case of third person, what are the words that we are going to use? We are going to use he, you are going to use she, you are going to use it and you are also going to use they. They is plural, he and she is singular. Clear? Now, we will remember one more thing. There is one more type. See, personal pronoun has a similar kind also. That is possessive pronoun. What is a possessive pronoun? Possessive means what? Possessive means when you have something, when something belongs to you. Possession, belonging. Okay. So, if I say this is, this bag is mine. Then what is the word mine? The word mine is possessive pronoun. Because whose is this bag? Whose belonging is this one? This bag is whose? This bag is mine. So, mine word becomes possessive pronoun. Now, coming to the second person. What is the possessive word for it? If I say, this bag is yours. So, the word yours becomes possessive pronoun for the second person. And last, for the third person, obviously, if there are so many for the first, for the uh, personal pronoun, there will be a number of words for the possessive pronoun also. So, in case of possessive pronoun, what are the words? This bag is hers. First word, this bag is his, isn't it? Second word, it's is another word and this bag is theirs. This is another word. So, only the circle words, you will write them down in your copies so that it is completely, completely clear to you. So, how many kinds of pronouns we have done? Two. Number one, personal pronoun. Number two, possessive pronoun. You will also remember one more thing. Possessive pronoun and pers possessive pronoun and possessive adjectives are different. How are they different? See, adjectives always require a noun. Okay. If I have to say that you are a good girl, then good is the adjective. But good needs a noun also. Who is good? You have to say now who is good. The girl must be good or the boy is good or the dog is good or the cat is good or the teacher is good. Isn't it? So you require a noun. If a noun is not present, then it is a pronoun. For example, if I say, this is your bag, then your is the possessive adjective because just beside the word your, what do you see? Bag. Isn't it? This is your bag. So, because of the presence of the word bag, which is the noun, we can understand a pronoun and a noun cannot sit beside one another. A pronoun sits in the place of the noun. Okay? By removing the noun, you put the pronoun. Pronoun and noun will not sit together. But in case of an adjective, obviously the adjective and the noun sit side by side. Okay. Coming to the next type, we will also remember what is a neuter gender. I think already you, most of you know what is a neuter gender. Neuter gender means when you cannot understand what the gender is, whether that person is a female or the person is a male, you cannot understand. If I say a child, I saw a child crying. From this sentence, can you understand whether it is a boy child or a girl child? No. So, if from the sentence, you cannot understand whether the person or the child or the animal is a boy or a girl, you will write it. Okay? You will not write he or she, you will just write it. For example, let us see these red words. He loves his dog. See, his dog. And cannot do without 
should you write him or her over here no you will write it because in the complete sentence sentence number 1 you cannot understand whether the dog is a boy dog or a girl dog that is why you will write the word it okay second sentence the horse fell and broke its leg in the sentence number 2 can you understand whether this horse is a boy horse or a girl horse no that is why you will write its not it or not he or she okay not his leg or her leg but you will write its leg clear next if we come to exercise 1 what do you find it is a very easy exercise see in the following sentences you have to point out the pronouns and say for what each stands for example if i tell you to identify the pronouns and to say whether it is the personal pronoun or the possessive pronoun because up to this this much how what you have done you have just learned what is the personal pronoun and what is the possessive pronoun see let us try if we can do it karim has lost his dog and cannot find it so karim is the noun now what is the pronoun over here his dog no this is not the possessive pronoun why because this one is a noun so noun and a pronoun cannot sit side by side you will have to replace the noun so if you replace this noun then does it make any sense no karim has lost his what his you require a noun that means this is not a pronoun this is a possessive adjective so in the first sentence which is the noun which is the pronoun sorry this one it which is used in the place of dog okay let's move to sentence number 2 suresh is at the head of his class for he studies hard suresh is the noun what is the word used instead of suresh see he this word is used instead of repeating suresh again okay we could have written suresh is at the head of his class suresh is sorry this at is remove this this one is wrong suresh is the head of his class for suresh studies hard so this means repetition without repeating the same word suresh again over here we will write he that is why it is a personal pronoun rama you are a lazy boy then you you is a second person personal pronoun correct the camel is a beast of burden now camel see we could have written the second sentence starting with camel again but we have not written we cannot understand the gender that is why we have written what it okay neuter gender number 5 birds build their nest in trees now this one is a tricky sentence this one does not have any pronoun because see if you think that their word is a pronoun no because nests is a noun so noun and a pronoun does not sit side by side you have to remove one and then put that other thing in the place of the noun that means you will remove noun and that you, then you put the pronoun in that place both of them sitting side by side that is not possible in a sentence okay coming to exercise 2 this is a very small exercise see in the following sentence the pronouns use pronouns in the place of nouns you'll just have to place the pronouns wherever you have to remove the nouns and place it the boys went into the garden where the boys saw a snake see what are you repeating you repeating the boys so the boys went into the garden where they because it is plural saw a snake number 2 very soon the rabbit noticed alice now it starts repeating alice so as she went hunting about and called out to alice again it is repeated called out to her in an angry tone very easy now the next time what are the next two kinds the reflexive and the emphatic pronouns this we will do together because it is quite similar to one another see when self this one you write in your copies when self is added to my your him her it or selves you can add any two words if it is singular you will add self if it is plural you will add selves these are the nouns is it these are the pronouns so you will add the word self or selves just after it for example himself myself yourself itself herself now if it is they then you will write themselves okay clear now how will you frame this kind of sentence and how will you understand which one is the reflexive and which one is the emphatic pronoun because what is being said in this part it is said that in both the cases reflexive or emphatic in both the cases you write these words myself yourself himself themselves itself okay so how will you understand which if you are given to identify which one is the reflexive pronoun which one is the emphatic pronoun then how will you understand which one is what let's see see these four sentences i hurt myself 
see when the word I and the myself, the self word is written separately, not side by side, then it is reflexive pronoun. Okay. For example, if I see, see the last sentence, the horse, see the horse is the noun and the self word is used where? Leaving one place. Leaving this place, we are writing the self word. But if this is side by side, for example, see the second sentence. We hurt ourselves. This one is reflexive. But if we emphasize, if we have to give importance to it, we, if we write we ourselves were hurt, then we and ourselves are sitting side by side. Okay. That is why they are emphasizing a particular idea. That is why it is emphatic pronoun. So when the two words sit side by side, for example, let's see this, these two, then it will be completely clear to you. I will do it myself. So I and myself, these two words sit separately, not side by side. But in this one, I and myself sit side by side. That is why it will become, it will, it is emphasizing an idea, putting force or giving importance to an idea. That is why it is an emphatic pronoun. Now it will become all the more clear if you do the first exercise. See, tell which pronoun in the following sentences are reflexive and which emphatic. You'll just have to identify which one is reflexive which one is uh, emphatic. Number one, I will go myself. What is this? This one is myself is reflexive. Why? Because I and myself are sit not sitting side by side. Here, number two, Rama, this is the word noun and himself. Okay, not sitting side by side. That is why reflexive again. Number three, we often deceive ourselves. We and ourselves. Are they sitting side by side? No, that is why reflexive again. I myself heard the remark. So I and myself sitting side by side. That is why this one is emphatic. Number five, you express yourself. That means you and yourself. It's not sitting side by side. That is why reflexive again. Don't you deceive yourself. See yourself and you. Are they sitting side by side? No, that is why reflexive. Next, number seven, I myself heard the remark. This is a repetition. So, I and myself sitting side by side, emphatic again. Xerx Zer himself was the last to cross the hell spot. So, this one is the name of the person whom we are talking about and himself sitting side by side. So, this one is an emphatic. Clear? Now, coming to the next type, demonstrative pronouns. See, in between, if you have any problem, if you follow the Renan Martin, if you follow any other grammar book, grammar magic or any book that is followed in your school, you can obviously, if you have any particular sentence, uh, you, if you have doubt in any particular sentence, you can write them down in the comment section and I'll surely love to help you all. Okay, so dear children, let's come to the next type, demonstrative pronouns. See, so consider the following sentence. Let us see the example. See, what do you mean by this word demonstrate? Demonstrate means when you go, I think you have been to the exhibitions, you have been to the science exhibition where all the students, your sisters and your brothers stand there and explain what to do next, how to do the experiment, how the volcanic eruptions will happen. They do, no? Isn't it? In the chemistry lab, in the physics lab, during exhibitions. So like that, when you demonstrate, when you point out, see, that is my pen. This is my house. That is my sister. Those are my dogs. Then all those words which you use to point out that particular thing becomes demonstrative pronouns because you are demonstrating, because you are pointing out. Yes, this one is mine. That one is hers. This one is my bag. That one is your bag. These are my pens. Okay. So those are demonstrative pronouns. So the words that are used in case of demonstrative pronouns, this, these, for case of in the case of plural, that and those. Okay. So let's read this, uh, whatever is written. I think this part is already clear by what I said. Let us just read this. It will be noticed that the pronouns in bold are used to point. Bold means written in this deep letters, isn't it? So all those bold words are pronoun as used to point out the objects. If you want to write down the definition in your copies, you can write out point out the objects. To point out certain things, you use these words and these are demonstrative pronouns. Now, 
let's come to indefinite pronouns what are indefinite pronouns this is the other another kind of pronouns indefinite pronouns are let's see indefinite from this word what do you understand indefinite not definite you are not sure about or you do not particularly talk about the person or you do, you do not call out the name of that person or perhaps you want to go to the market you your mother tells you to buy some mangoes but she does not tell you how many mangoes she just tells you buy some mangoes so these words some can be an indefinite pronoun because she does not tell you how many mangoes you want to buy you are given to buy she does not tell you buy five mangoes no she was she uses the word some she uses the word few she uses the word uh, no one she uses the word uh, somebody okay somebody knocked at the door did she particularly tell that uh, who knocked at the door no somebody not in particular but anybody it can be anybody another example that will suit i think this context is for example if i get inside the class and if i tell you uh, uh, somebody give me a book that does not mean that i'm talking particularly to some particular child isn't it i'm not telling rahul you give me the book or satish you give me the book or anamika you give me the book no i'm not taking a name in particular i'm just telling anybody anybody can give the book so anybody somebody one none all these words are indefinite words that is why they will all be indefinite pronouns so what will be the example or the definition of it all these pronouns that refer to persons or things in a general way if you want to write down you will use only this word okay general way a general term for something clear now we will do the exercise find out the indefinite pronouns from the sentences we will find out the indefinite pronouns pronouns sorry from these sentences see number 1 none but fools have ever believed it so none it is not telling in particular who are those fools who do not believe okay or uh, whoever have believed next all were drowned so all it is not telling that uh, this girl that boy that father that mother all of them have drowned no just a random word some are born great so some this one is a indefinite pronoun somebody has stolen my watch it is not said in particular who who is the thief who has stolen my watch no somebody not in particular nobody not not even one person nobody okay nobody was there to rescue the child so it does not say ravi was not there to rescue my child okay it is just a nobody not even one person who that person is is not said in particular so indefinite pronoun last one few few escaped unhurt that means few are those people who escaped without being hurt okay and uh, this word few does not um, include these five children or those five boys or those five girls no any few some few of the people over there okay next we'll move to distributive pronouns now what are distributive pronouns see if we consider the following sentences let us see the picture first okay here is the picture see in a class for example you are sitting in the class so many children are sitting with you isn't it you are sitting in a class full of children now i get inside the class and call satish maybe this boy is satish it is his birthday today okay and i tell satish to distribute the chocolates or the candies or the pencils and erasers that she, that he has brought for all these students okay i tell him to distribute the chocolates among each of the boys and girls in the class okay that means one toffee at a time maybe he is going to give one toffee to her one to her and everybody is going to get get the same number of toffees isn't it so each means one at a time this has to be singular so you know that you use a to identify to write a verb after the word a singular word you use the word s so you will use the singular verb for it so each of the boys gets a prize another word each took it in turn distributive means when you are distributing something when you are talking about each at a time or no one at a time then you are talking one at a time okay that means it will always use a singular verb for it okay so what are the words used in distributive pronouns see these are the words you can write them down each either neither 
Okay. These are the words you can use in case of distributive pronoun. What do you mean by distributive pronoun? When you refer to persons or things one at a time. This highlighted word is important. You refer to them one at a time. Although I say I come into your class and say everyone must take out their books. Okay. So this one is an incorrect sentence. You have to say everyone must take out his book. Okay. Because everyone means one at a time. Clear? This one. You will have to be careful before writing the sentence. Exercise 1. Let us see. Find out the distributive pronouns from the following sentences. Very easy. Either of these roads leads. See, leads. Singular word for the verb to the railway station. So, which one is the distributive pronoun? This one. Either. Either of you can go. So, either is again the distributive pronoun here. And last one. Neither of the accusations is true. So, which one is the distributive pronoun here? Neither. So, no one, none of you, of none of the accusations that is done is true. Clear? Now, two more pronouns you have and then you are done with pronouns. See, next one. This one, be a bit careful because this one is a little bit difficult. The others are not at all difficult for you, I think, my children. Okay. See, relative pronouns. What are relative pronouns? When you can relate between two or more things. See, let's see the first sentence. See, there are two sentences. Relative pronouns can be words which you use as conjunction to join two sentences. You will have to see that what is common in these two sentences. See, I met Hari. Hari had just returned. What are common in these two sentences? Hari. This thing is common in both the sentences. In both the places you find Hari. So, in the second case, remember the first picture I showed you before I started teaching pronouns. I showed you three pictures constantly without writing Ravi and Reena, Ravi and Reena in all the three sentences. You can write they or you can write he or she, isn't it? So in the second case, you will not use hurry again. So how will you join the sentence using a relative pronoun? Let's come to the type. See, write them these down in the in your copies. This is very important. All these highlighted words. See, who is used? To join with a relative pronoun as a relative pronoun and who is used when when you are joining persons. For example, in the first case, as I told you, the first thing we saw, this is a human being. So how will we join it? We will use what word over here? Who? I met Hari who had just returned. Second time Hari we are not using. So we will just write I met Hari who had just returned. Clear? Now if this is not a human being, for example, in the second case, see, I have found the pen. I lost the pen. So, what is repeated? Pen. So, this is not a human being. So, what, how will we join these, these two sentences? Now, come to the next highlighted word. Who is sometimes used in referring to animals? Whose is used in speaking of persons, animals and also things without life? So, with living beings are joined with what? Who, whose and uh, who and whose? These are the only two words with you with which you can join living things. And non-living things, which is used to, for things without life and for animals. So, certain things which do not have life, we join them with what? Which and that. And how to understand in which place you are going to use which, in which place you are going to use that. That depends on the usages or that depends on how the sentence appears or if you find the sentence appreciable or if it sounds good, then it is fine. For example, in the second sentence, see, I have found the pen. See, in this case, it seems nice if you use the word which. I have found the pen which I had lost. Okay. But in the third case, here is the book. You lent me the book. What is repeated? Book. So, in the place of book, let us use the word that. Here is the book that you lent me. Okay. See these three that you have just discussed is written over here. Clear. I met Hari who had just returned. I found the pen which I lost. Here is the book that you lent me. Clear. Now we will directly move to the exercise. This one is a very easy one. I think you will be able to solve it. See exercise one. Name the relative pronouns in the following sentence. You'll just have to identify which are the relative pronouns. Very easy for you all. The pen that you gave me is a very good one. Identify this one. Try, try, try. See that. Okay. Because we are using this word to identify the pen that you gave me 
and also to identify that same pen which is a very good one so you're joining the word pen okay the idea of the pen the two ideas about the pen okay and the pen is repeated that is why you that that is a non living thing so you are joining it with that second the answer which you gave is not right so the answer what are the two parts of the sentence you have given an answer and that answer is not right so it is a non living thing it is an answer so you are joining it with which number 3 i know the woman whose child was hurt so see you are talking about a woman and that woman's child also who was hurt so this is a living thing so you are joining it with whose next number 4 bring me the letters which the postman left so you are talking about the letters that i am wanting now and the, the same letters that the postman had left so you are using the you are repeating the word letters so that is also a non living thing you use the word which last one this is the house that jack built you are talking about a particular house this is the house and this is the house that jack built so you are talking about the house this is a non living thing so you use the word that relative pronoun clear next exercise 2 now in this case you have to join together each of the following pairs of sentences by means of a connective you have to join okay like we did in the examples the first examples see there are eight i think you will be able to solve all the eight over here number 1 i know a man this is his book so we are talking about a man and we are talking about that man's book so how will we join it we can write i know a ma- i know a man whose book is this you are talking about a man so you for living things you use two words who and whose so over here you write whose whose book is this number 2 the thief stole the watch the thief was punished so what is being repeated the thief so what how will you write it the thief comma who stole the watch there is a living thing so you write who stole the watch comma there are two commas did you follow the thief comma who stole the watch comma was punished be careful inside the two commas whatever you have written okay and outside the comma whatever you have written that must form a complete meaning for example the thief comma who stole the watch comma leave the portion written inside the comma and other than that is it forming a complete sentence check if it is forming a complete sentence the thief was punished see it is a complete sentence okay then you know your sentence is correct next next come to third sentence show the road the road leads to delhi so we are talking about the road okay so show the that is a non living thing so show the road that leads to delhi number 4 the dog bit the burglar the burglar had broken into the house we are talking about the burglar burglar means thief so that is a living thing so you write the dog bit the burglar who had broken into the house okay next number 5 i know the man he stole the bicycle so we are talking about the man who has stolen the bicycle so i know the man that is a living thing who stole the bicycle clear next number 6 the man stole the bicycle he has been arrested so we are talking about the man again so the man comma again that kind of a difficult sentence the man comma who has been arrested okay sorry the man comma who stole the bicycle see first he stole the bicycle then he was arrested so directly write in that manner the man who stole the bicycle has been arrested so comma you know where you have to put before who and after bicycle the man comma who stole the bicycle comma has been arrested now coming to the seventh sentence i have found the umbrella i lost it we are talking about the umbrella so i have found the umbrella that is a non living thing that i had lost here yeah. number 8 i saw a soldier he had lost an arm so we are talking about the soldier who has lost an arm that is a living thing living being so we are, we say i saw a soldier who had lost an arm clear i guess uh, you have got 8 out of 8 in this exercise now we will come to the last kind of pronoun interrogative pronoun this is very easy from the word only you can understand and those who cannot understand from the word interrogative for them this is the picture this is a big big question okay interrogative word pronoun now let's see the two examples who is who is there about whom you are thinking so these two words written in bold are the interrogative pronouns because they are asking a question okay so wherever you are asking questions this thing is written in bold you can write them down just write the word and write whatever is highlighted in this place whatever i told you 
to write down. Just remember that you will have to just brush up these ideas before you go to give the exam. And then you can solve everything in pronouns. Clear? That is my guarantee. Now we will do the last exercise. See exercise 1. Check the following sentences to find out the interrogative pronouns. See this is very easy. Oh no, we have another exercise also. We will do that also. Which is the house? So which is the interrogative word? Which do you prefer? Tea or coffee? So it is asking, do you want tea or coffee? So which is the interrogative word? What is the matter? What is the question? What do you want? So what is the question? Which of the boys saw him? So which is the interrogative word? Which of you has done this? Again, which is the interrogative word? I think this one, though, obviously you have got 6 out of 6. Okay, now exercise 2. Use the correct form of the interrogative pronoun in the following sentences. You will have to use. Now, this is a fill in the blank form. It is given in the fill in the blank form and you have to write the interrogative pronoun here. See, who wishes to see you? Okay, so the word will be who. Number two, dash do you wish to see? Now, over here, be careful. One and two, do not confuse. First one is who wishes to see you? Second one will be whom do you wish to see? Clear? Next, number three. Dash shall I give this to? So whom shall I give this to? Number four, do you believe? Dash do you believe did this? Who do you believe did this? Number five, about dash are you speaking? About whom are you speaking? Number six, dash did you see? What did you see? Asking a question about what did you see? Next, number seven, to dash did you give the key? To whom did you give the key? Okay, dash of the girls can see you the best. Which of the girls can see you the best? By dash was the book written. This one is very, very easy. By whom was the book written? Number 10. Dash did he say? What did he say? Clear? So I guess the chapter pronoun is very clear to you. I have done it in a single class only so that you can just open my video and all about pronoun is clear to you. And if there is any other problem in any other question or any other sentence which you cannot understand, you can write it in the comment section. I'll surely love to answer you. You can also mail me. Uh, I have given the email ID uh, in the description and if you have liked it, please comment, subscribe and share. Thank you.